uh, mentioned uh, clearly. Uh, yeah. Professor Sigda, uh, if you, if I may, uh, yeah. I, I, I went through the list of uh, uh, questions. So before we go uh, line by line, uh, uh, can I give a uh, overview of sure. uh, you know sure. what was the thinking behind AI for road safety? and how all this came about. So that will set a context and then the mm -hmm. questions I think will fall in place. And what was the motivation for AI in road safety? Yeah, yeah all Shall that has that been way? told to me by Professor Satish Chandra this morning. I had a long discussion to Professor Satish Chandra, uh, starting from Intel's, uh, I mean, country head and uh, meeting with DG, Everything. I mean, I, I, I have understood yeah. now the whole background of it. The proposal background you can give. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'll, I'll, uh, I'll give the proposal uh, background. Um, now, um, so I'll, I'll start here that, uh, you know, I, I know you already know about uh, the meeting that happened with uh, uh, Mr. Gadkariji and all that. So uh, in that meeting, uh, the the idea that was seeded was that uh, uh, we gave examples from other uh, state STU deployments or state transport unit deployments uh, of uh, 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 CAS devices or collision avoidance devices. That's how the discussion started. Uh, so we we were we were showing uh, results from the other state pilots of CAS devices and showing him that how. Uh, on every uh, metric which is tracked by the CAS, be it forward collision, be it uh, speed limit uh, uh, detection, be it lane departure. So every warning levels have come down, which means that the driver behavior on these counts, the device has, able, has been able to influence it. And so that, that was the data point that was provided from other state transport unit uh, deployments. So then this uh, got uh, Mr. Gadkariji excited and he said that, can you show, uh, can you showcase the same in Nagpur city, right? And, and that's where a meeting with the uh, NMC, the municipal commissioner uh, and all happened. And he said, please provide them all the support that is required. And, and if, uh, you know, this, this kind of genuine driver behavior improvement on the ground, I would like it to be showcased for the entire Nagpur city. And right? so this is, this is one context uh, of the, uh, you know, the technology vector that came in. Now, uh, the second aspect, uh, and, and this is again the data from the prior uh, pilots, that uh, when you analyze the CAS alerts for an individual driver, you get to know about the driver behavior. But when you aggregate the CAS alerts across a large fleet, you will get to know the risk level of the road itself. Right? So that's the benefit of the aggregated data. So that's where we first showed the concept of gray spots, that when we are aggregating the CAS alerts across a fleet of, say, 50, 100, you get a different level of insight. Right? You get to know what is the risk level of the road itself. Uh, and, and this is, of course, I'm not saying this is, this is the most comprehensive way to assess the risk, but this is assessing the risk based on the driver behavior or the driving behavior on that stretch. Right? That, that was the first level. And, and uh, we, we, we were showing examples that uh, in the areas where we have done the gray spot mapping, it nicely correlates with actual risky stretches on the road as determined by the uh, corporations of those stretches, right? So which kind of gave the indication that this is in the right direction. And, and the discussion that came up in that was, uh, looks like, you know, we have a means of uh, predetermining or, or kind of proactively assessing the risk levels of the road by using this uh, CAS alert. Now, what can we achieve if we can add more relevant data from the ground, right? So that's where the road asset information. So can if we can detect that there is a gap in the median, if we can detect that this is a poor stretch of the road, can these additional data features also be combined to determine a more reliable uh, indicator of the risk levels of the road? Right? So, so that was the second part, that one is driver behavior, and second is using aggregating these multiple composite features can we determine a proactive indicator of the risk levels of the road. Right? So that became the second topic. So these two were the uh, contributing thoughts of how technology should be in, uh, can be incorporated into road safety. And so this, these two became the main themes of how technology uh, will be applied for this, for this project. Okay, does that 
uh, give a quick context, Professor Sikta? Yeah, I mean, I, I have a few questions, so I'll uh, ask uh, those. Uh, first of all, we want to uh, um, use the uh, collision avoidance uh, system. Uh, which uh, has been in use in many advanced countries for quite long. Mm -hmm. And that is uh, also used as a, a kind of advanced driver assistance system so that drivers are given uh, some alerts that you are pretty close to a, a kind of uh, situation where a collision will occur. Now, uh, sometimes vision assistance assistance is also there that, uh, you see, uh, the driver in a truck or bus sits in such a height, uh, he is not often able to see a pedestrian who is pretty close to his uh, bus uh, on side or at the back or in the, even in the front also, it is, if it is on the, not on the driver's side. So somebody is walking pretty close to the bus, he is not able to see. Now, if the kind of uh, sensor can give him that clue that there is a pedestrian, so he must not go forward uh, or, or such thing. I mean, there are a whole lot of other issues. He may be pretty close to a infrastructure uh, hazard. Uh, kind of solid object or a kind of road, uh, uh, kind of uh, light pole or a sign pole or or many others. I mean, culvert, yeah. uh, rapid, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah. So he must yeah. get an alert on that. Now, if we are going to use these alerts, uh, now driver behavior. Once he is uh, uh, told that there is an OBU on board unit in the vehicle, which will give you alert on these these matters uh, on mm -hmm. on his uh, dashboard, uh, then uh, he is uh, uh, drivers are I mean if capable driver I mean not novice driver he will take those alert signals or kind of whatever message he gets, uh, mm. he will learn over time. Obviously, first day, he will not be trained to handle those alerts. But over time, he gets uh, equipped or rather knowledgeable or uh, smart enough to attend to all these things. And then he will be able to behave more smartly, safely to avoid the crashes. Um, yeah. In yeah. this case, in this case, what I see that uh, first uh, objective of yours is to uh, what was it, Velu or uh, any of you? You can tell the first thing that you want to do is installation of edge devices, sir. Uh, yes. Shall I project it, sir? Yeah. Can Shall we can we share the screen? Hmm. Uh, I will yeah. share. That's what I'm just. So the first is the collision. Yeah, let let. Uh, yeah, I will share it. You will. Uh, your screen itself. One second. I've also kept it yeah. open. I can okay. also share if you like. Uh, if you want, if you want, you can share it. So otherwise, I'm just going to share this. Okay. I'm just sharing. Yeah. And and these are you know some examples that we have seen that uh, for example the uh, forward collision warning right or headway warning. So after you receive yeah. these uh, alerts like three months, uh, then the driver itself becomes more defensive. And, and these are That's some right. observations. Yeah, he 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 becomes experienced and uh, he will be uh, behaving differently while driving. It is driver's behavior will change. But question is, what I am uh, trying to uh, kind of get a clarification here uh, hmm. means, I mean, what is now? our, yes, yeah. I mean, this is too small. Can you make it a little larger? Ah, okay, I'll make it. Pull that bottom, bottom thing. Yeah, yeah I did it. Is yeah. it okay now? Using 
it's still not uh, so big. Ah, uh, too big. So it's uh, it's good out of out of screen. Little less. Yeah, yeah. That that's okay now. I think. Is it okay now? You can see. Yeah, yeah. That's okay. Oh, no, it's all right. Now, uh, it, it, it's, it says, I mean, in number one, you say the focus area or objective you are saying, mm -hmm. the AI-based edge device is collision avoidance system in public transport fleet. Now, in the background thing, we talked only all statistics of uh, kind of, I mean, that is proposal. I mean, I would request uh, Velmurgan to do it a little better. Uh, okay. I mean, okay. not just that so many people killed and so many uh, survived, etc. We need something about Nagpur's public transport related kind of safety problem. That is what we are going to solve here. So we must refer that as the problem which we are going to solve. That is the background of the proposal. Okay. That's how okay. we should look at it. Now, if you ask the, uh, uh, I mean, the operator of uh, Nagpur buses, they will be able to give you all these data very simply that how many uh, of such accidents have taken place. They will give you that. If, if this project is for them, helping them in safety, uh, safe operation of the buses without or minimum kind of crashes during a month or a year, I mean, they will be very happy uh, on that, this, this project. And we all are interested in it. Only thing is that we have to have very clear idea how exactly we are going to do it. Now, they probably are uh, kind of operators, so they are not interested in how exactly it is going to be done. But question is, uh, we being technical people, we intend to know what exactly the thing that will be measured, what alert will be given to him, and that's what you are trying to explain, and I, I have understood that. And that I had in mind that, yes, it is the gap. It is the headway, how close it is. That is what the collision avoidance means. I mean, we want to save ourselves without collision, whether it is another vehicle or a tree or a kind of road features. Yeah, we must not be hitting the curb uh, of the road, etc. If we are coming close to the intersection, there has to be a different speed regime uh, rather than uh, he should be driving like a normal mid-block speed. So like that, I mean, what I want to see is that what exactly will be measured or sensed. It is not measured, it is sensed because it is sensor-based and that sensor identified information is transmitted in uh, convert it to an information uh, to the driver. So that is to be told uh, in a clear terms. And that's what will make the proposal more uh, kind of with merit or uh, kind of uh, understandable rather than uh, just telling that uh, we'll do an AI based kind of uh, safety. What is AI based safety? I mean, it is not that way. I mean, it has to be more clear. And here we are saying that, um, uh, what is that? Reflect reactive capacity test, driver behavior, rating scale, glare recovery, night vision. Uh, I mean, what for we need all these? Before and after the installation of the system, no, sir, basically how they are responding to various stimuli. That is the reason we try to keep that uh, part. Uh, so because uh, uh, see, uh, that is the reason we kept this uh, thing. Uh, so, uh, Brother Sikdar, so, so what, what we have... Uh, 
what we have been able or what we have done in uh, earlier pilots is that uh, based on the nature of the uh, alerts and based on how the driver has responded to these alerts we try to come up with a measure of the driver score right, based on the occurrence so of these alerts and the responses yes yeah. like what uh, yeah i'm just explaining what we have done prior right uh, at that time we did not have a partner like crri uh, so we we created uh, we we assess a driver score now uh, you know now that we have a much more comprehensive mechanism of actually evaluating these drivers and the expectation is that after 3 months 4 months with the device the driver has become more defensive the driver has become more alert now are there other measures right in addition to the score that uh, you know, the, that we put out as part of this uh, uh, device that you know, are there other measures that we can employ to comprehensively sense that how has the driver been influenced by living with the after living with the device for like 4 or 5 months because right yeah, now the drive... surely yeah. okay go ahead please Yeah, uh, right now the score uh, that that will be put out is a combination of what is the nature of the alerts and how the driver has responded to these alerts. Right, that's the measure of the score. But I'm sure that that is not the most comprehensive way of uh, measuring driver behavior change. And that's where I think some of these tests that Dr. Bail Murugan is proposing will be more helpful. So okay, I mean, what I I would consider if you, I mean. i mean we all must have traveled in buses uh, urban buses uh, at some point in time and we know how they drive and what exactly is the problem with these buses if they meet with accident why do they meet or how the uh, the kind of accidents takes place now fundamentally basically the uh, i mean behavior of all road users we are trying to control the behavior of the bus driver but all others on the road are free we don't have any control on them the result is result is that we are monitoring this driver's behavior uh, in response to the collision avoidance alerts which we are giving to him uh, every moment every seconds or every uh, Yeah, I mean, which is the section of the section, but all others, yeah, a a two wheeler, a two wheeler will come across from right to left in front of the bus, uh, without without any warning, without anything, and obviously, cash will catch uh, that and tell him that if possible, stop within one second. So he he will have to apply brake uh, within one seconds to save that guy or to avoid the collision. so that kind of unruly behavior in traffic is there and particularly in peak hours it is it is just a nightmare the way we travel on our roads uh, i mean without anything happening if at all <laughs> so that that's sheer luck and that's why people say that god is there in india <laughs> that probably <laughs> saves us now question is since there is no rule of the road for most of them uh, they don't obey so these are the technologies by which we have to make a difference that is the idea which we pursue on such proposals and but we must uh, tell exactly what measurements we are going to make or what will be sensed now looking into the realistic point as i described just now a two wheeler will come from the right uh, from the right hand side he is trying to overtake the bus because he knows the bus will go at slower speed and he will try to overtake him and do all this dangling in front of the bus and bus wala has to save him that is his responsibility <laughs> everybody thinks like that similarly pedestrian will come similarly something else will come. so we have to think exactly the way the road sin is the sin in the road that should be kept in mind while deciding or even writing this that how shall i measure what will be quantified in the sensing and what alert i shall give uh, and and appropriately obviously 
uh, as I say, did the beginning, whether, uh, I mean, you are going to record the behavior before as well as after. Now, uh, yes. in this thing, can before, I just elaborate a bit, sir? Can I elaborate? Say, for example, yeah, what, please. what we mean before and after, uh, is some of the tests will be done only before, some will be done before and after. For instance, before and after, I'll just tell you, reactive capacity test. Uh, basically, how the people have responded to the stimuli, for that, there is a VNR system is there, wherein uh, since uh, before the installation of the CAS, uh, how the person was actually driving on the road, that we will be assessing it. And uh, he will be uh, put in into the afterwards, the CAS will be installed onto their buses and they will run the bus maybe for the two to three months. And again, after that, we will assess how whether he has started responding in a different way for the same kind of reaction, uh, reactive things, uh, if the kind of stimuli is there, because if, as you are rightly saying, we will not be exactly replicating the uh, presence of a two-wheeler, but if a suddenly any stimuli comes, uh, how he is responding now? So that will be assessed. And uh, right. in the case of only before things, sir, let us say only before we are doing glare recovery and visual acuity test. That is basically glare recovery test and visual acuity test. We want to know that during the nighttime driving, because the person is expected to do nighttime driving as well as daytime driving. So with or without the glasses, spectacles is using means uh, how he is responding to the glad recovery part, uh, we will be assessing over a period of time, that's all. But that before and after will not come into picture because uh, uh, the presence of your what to say cast is not going to matter at all. So that's these are why, physiological. Uh, these are physiological uh, yeah, kind of character or yeah, measures yeah. of this person. Exactly. Only thing is that his experience with these OBU in uh, the vehicle uh, and, and his behavior because he will be uh, probably trained that you have to save these uh, accidents or rather uh, he knows that he has to save the accidents. It's not that he has not been given uh, permission to save the accident. He, he has to save and he has to uh, respond to these alerts promptly and as required. Now that's what he will gain experience. Uh, you will see that if you test him within two days, three days, five days, you will not get better results. But if you do it after two months, obviously you will get a better results. Yeah, that so what that's we, what... That, that is yeah. what we want to do for certain tests. Not every test will be before and after. We didn't uh, make that uh, because uh, maybe we'll bring in that uh, which is before and after specifically we'll write it. And uh, only uh, before and after is the one which is to be done from the CAS uh, perspective. Remaining is taken as the base data only, whether that's night vision test or CLAR recovery test. They are basically uh, from their, uh, how they are, how the subject is, uh, for that assessment we'll utilize it. And even yeah. for the road sign test, <coughs> sir, uh, after having, uh, uh, because say for example, sir, there's a stimuli of uh, uh, that uh, seeing the sign and is responding well or not. Uh, so that aspect also we can uh, measure over time. Uh, that uh, uh, a CAS will, uh, a CAS is expected to give the road signs as well. Uh, that's what I understood from uh, Juby and Anbu. That uh, 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 inventory data, inventory data is possible, not a CAS system. Inventory data is possible from that thing. So if the road sign is uh, available on the ground and how is responding to the thing, because they plan to put it on the private buses as well. That's what I understood from them. Yeah. No, no, that's okay. But question is, many of these, many of these in an urban situation, I mean, uh, we, we all drive probably, each of us. Now, question yeah. is, how do we drive? How do we drive on the road? Uh, how, how we respond to the signs? The bus driver does exactly in the similar way. Yeah. Uh, now, obviously, uh, I mean, without seeing the sign also, if, if we are cautious or rather safe driver, uh, we will behave differently even if there is no science. Uh, suppose yeah. there is no sign, even then I will behave differently depending yeah. on the situation as I see in front of me. So, 
like that there will be drivers who will do much better there will be drivers who will not do much better with respect to the science etc and many of them don't care about the science at all uh, we we do know i mean well about that that's fine all that is fine i mean what physical uh, measurements you are going to do with the drivers or otherwise uh, it's all fine I, my my question or my uh, i mean um, uh, requirement of understanding i mean what i want to understand is uh, how uh, the sensors will measure what what will be measured what will be captured to provide the alert and how are we going to use it uh, as information to correct or improve the safety that's what we are now in this case yes collision avoidance is the main purpose and that's what is uh, i mean the, these are sensor based and obviously it will be depending on the distance or we can classify in so many ways that whether it is a vehicle in front or a kind of pillar in front or a pedestrian in front all that is probably visually will be demonstrated in one of your uh, figure it was given in that way yeah. so yeah, probably that's that's how you intend to give to the driver yeah. as well yeah See, that uh, if you scroll down, yeah, there's a table. Go figure two. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Figure two, and if you come down to the table below that, yeah. this is a description of the CAS alerts which are available. Um, so, so, so what the probably, uh, probably go over it, the figure two, if it is, you know, uh, if you if you scroll a little bit above. So the pedestrian, if there is a pedestrian in front of the vehicle. it will trigger an alert and uh, both an uh, visual and an audible you know uh, uh, alert and uh, similarly the head, head, the headway monitoring is if this if the self if the driver uh, this vehicle that is equipped with the system if it is getting closer say about you know 100 or 200 meters at the current speed and uh, if the time to collision to the front vehicle is less than 2 seconds it will be a highly audible alert and before 3 seconds it will just be a visible alert so that's the headway monitoring warning and the lane departure warning is if the driver is departing from the lane without putting on the indicator it means an unintended you know departure it could be due to drowsiness or sleepiness of the driver so therefore and if there is a lane that is directed on the road this system will alert with a with a intermittent beep so that the driver you know gets alert and looks at this and uh, that's the third one that's the lane departure warning the last one is the 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 forward collision warning if uh, if when the vehicle is very close less than 1 second to the pre at the current speed if i will hit the vehicle in front of me within less than 1 second then it's a highly you know a, a very alert audible warning that is generated these are the four kinds of warnings and that's listed in table 1 so these are the ones that we are measuring so this will help understand the driver's behavior how safe he is so easy putting on the indicator before changing lane one easy uh, 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 easy aware of a pedestrian that could be in the collision zone of the device and uh, easy keeping a safe distance to the previous the vehicle ahead through both hmw and the forward collision warning whether it is 3 seconds whether the vehicle ahead is in 3 seconds you know uh, to collide or less than 1 second to collide so these are the four kinds of alerts which have both visible and audible alerts so these are the ones that the system is measuring uh, professor siddha uh, and we you can explain the accelerometer event also like uh, that accelerometer that also will be covered no yeah, yeah. yes uh, yeah so, so in addition we have also we are also tracking how fast the deceleration of the vehicle is happening for example if there is a vehicle in front and if the driver is pressing on the brake instantly if the deceleration is you know high so that is called a, a harsh uh, you know a harsh braking and uh, cornering is even the vehicle is turning around and uh, you know if easy slamming on the brake and cornering that's a harsh cornering and the same thing you know harsh acceleration for example if there is a signal that you know uh, you just got a green and uh, you know the vehicle, the driver is immediately pressing the button uh, you know accelerator just to speed up right so this is mm -hmm. the 
accelerometer meter events so these are in a way uh, you know events are sensing you know uh, sensors data that we are getting from the behavior of the driver who is operating the vehicle so these are the uh, you know this is the description of table 1 so hope this explains maybe you know if we need we can explain this a little bit in detail and add it to the uh, uh, proposal sir no no these are okay but only thing is that in the text we will have to say that these are the measurements or observations that will be made will will be made mm -hmm. on the driver's mm -hmm. kind of behavior which will be okay. automatically measured in mm -hmm. in the uh, kind of cash cash uh, or uh, or rather whatever your uh, ai system you are mm -hmm. putting in in the obu on board unit and mm -hmm. that will that will measure all these things uh, yes. appropriately to know mm -hmm. about the behavior of the driver yes. that, that's okay. what it sure. is so, whether it's yeah. a harsh braking so or this we will add the verbal description of each of these events and that will uh, you know uh, explain sir so sure yeah, that, that that makes it uh, explanatory that what exactly will be measured and how it will be utilized. Both these things are required. How it will be, what will be measured and how it will be utilized, that is also required. So then only it establishes the purpose for which you are measuring. Okay. Now let's sure. let us go to the other objectives. Yeah, yeah. I'm going let's go a little up. Uh, yeah, gone up. Yeah. Yeah, here, uh, uh, application of art artificial intelligence to uh, proactively identify the black spot or gray spots, the Nagpur network. This yeah. is what uh, is, is a little bothering me. I mean, how do you uh, kind of <laughs> yeah. identify the, uh, yeah, the I, black I, spot I, or gray yeah. spot? I will explain the initial their thought process, and then they will take yeah. part. Because they told us initially, because uh, um, Ms. Juby and uh, Dr. Uh, Anbu, they had some discussion with uh, Nagpur, uh, uh, Mr. Ananta had some bad discussion there from Intel. So, what there are about 20 black spots identified in the Nagpur road network uh, uh, by some uh, road owning agency, maybe NMC or somebody who has done the thing. So, they actually uh, that. Uh, because of this CAS, uh, taking CAS on board, uh, one second, I'll, I'll call it later. Hello? Uh, taking CAS on board, they felt uh, basically uh, the probable gray spots, uh, uh, which is going to be identified out of this CAS system, uh, can become black spots in future. So for that, uh, this system can be utilized. That is what one part they told. Other one no, is, but question is question but is I mean they have identified they have identified the black spots you say fifty yeah, odd black spots they have identified how how they have identified what was the method or mechanism by which they identified the black spot now our method of identifying the gray spot will be completely different from their identification of black spot that is must be understood by those people that is correct sir that is what. And I only point is that why we put it in 2A, that part is basically based on the whatever the NMC or the NIT, NIT Nagpur implementers have identified that locations, which are the foreign geometric design improvements, which we used to give. No, no, we are not interested in that. that, that hello, is hello, we are not interested in their black spots. We are trying to understand how shall we identify no, 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 the gray spots or likely dangerous high risk location those are the things we are intending to identify and how shall we identify no, by sir. this and here i would like to clarify sir one yes. is the identified black spot what i understood from juby you correct me if i am wrong like uh, she uh, whatever identified black spots are there in that lower in that uh, because it's a uh, uh, request has come from the topmost uh, person of the corner uh, mr nitin gadgari honorable minister has requested so whatever the black spots which are identified on that thing has to be corrected so that we are supposed to give the geometric design improvements and things like that through the uh, safety parameters to be addressed which is a traditional work we will do it and the possible gray spots which are coming through the caste system, 
were uh, has to be attended to so that is the two uh, 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 double uh, things have to be addressed um, uh, and that is through the remedial measures uh, these are the a b c we are written uh, do we yeah. is this discussion it went uh, based on that only uh, i have restructured uh, this was the thing we based on discussion with them this has been done uh, do we if it is anything different kindly tell yeah, yeah. Uh, i think uh, you know the two aspects that you mentioned one is uh, uh, the remedial measures i think uh, you know at least the people on this team are very well uh, familiar with that maybe uh, i'll just focus on the ai part of it right the gray spot no, no. like uh, uh, the identified black spot have to be addressed no that is what you people yeah. are talking. that is why because of the minister's uh, uh, involvement is here that uh, identified black spots on the road network uh, will be sir as you are rightly saying it would have been done based on the traditional our protocol of ministry they would have done based on that that is a, uh, we we ourselves we ourselves have worked on 22 black spots yes, in That's nagpur i wrote to you and mate, extensively sir. studied them given the complete design and operational requirements the way they are to be tackled or black spot should be made white it's spot <laughs> so all that we have given them now that is a traditional way but that's not our concern here uh, let it be outside this proposal you may write it in a corner in some way for their interest that's okay no problem but question is that's not in our focus of discussion today that will be done in traditional way they are interested in that also and you being in crri you will do that we know it but sir uh, <laughs> let us look into the sir, but, ai part of it sir but uh, i would like to say maybe our director is also that he might have had discussion with them i am not sure like uh, generally whatever the uh, uh, minister wants that road network to be uh, Uh, whatever identified black spots, we should also address it, sir. Otherwise, some point in time, uh, may, uh, they will be asking us about it. Uh, what we are going to identify through this system is fine. Basically, there is no tech, uh, any technology development or anything we are emphasizing here. Whatever the different expertise available from different organizations like CRRI, Intel, or for that matter, INAI, and all these people's uh, technical know-how has to be pulled in. and to try to make the road network whichever we are identifying in the city to be uh, having the uh, best possible safety measures yeah. that is Do dr velu dr velu that is that is right what you were saying it is okay but uh, yeah. maybe our method of identifying gray spot what jibi will be telling us now uh, probably that will identify these black spots also as as something something violet spot or something <laughs> as a more more dangerous spot <laughs> that's correct sir i mean that, that's okay that's okay but question is we are now interested in how do we identify the gray spot or risky locations in yeah. the network by our ai technique this is what is of most important interest yeah. okay yeah so uh, go ahead you Jubi and Anbu, you can answer. Yeah. I try. Right? Yeah, yes, sure, sir. No, uh, yeah, I think that's that, at least for the purpose of this discussion, because this is, uh, you know, this is the novel thing that we are trying to introduce, right? Uh, so the objective being that, uh, uh, how do we proactively identify these risky areas? Now, uh, how we do, uh, and and this part will be done in in two phases, where we will keep. keep adding more data which is uh, which is relevant to identifying these risky areas the first approach is that we will aggregate cas alerts and what it means is that uh, so far what we discussed is that how the cas alerts are delivered to the driver and how they respond to it now if you take a step back and see what is the nature of the cas alerts coming from say a fleet of 100 buses which are running on the ground and do an analysis on that that gives you information as to you know why are why are uh, you know 50% of the vehicles doing a harsh braking on this particular stretch right or why are uh, you know 70% of uh, headway collision monitors coming on this particular stretch so that aggregation which we you know which we do using data analysis gives us the first level of indication that this is not a driver problem 
this is an infrastructure problem right so that is the first input towards gray spot i'll, I'll pause here anbu do you want to add uh, from the gray spot that we have done in the other states yeah yeah sure yes so so uh, from the field we have collected data and we are able to find and we uh, shared one sam sample data with uh, uh, government of india's uh, mobility hackathon two years back and uh, there was a challenge specifically run on this and people were able to figure out uh, from the data in bangalore uh, from a vehicle fleet of about 10, 15 vehicles and uh, there were gray spots identified and uh, these were presented to the bangalore police commissioner and uh, who who uh, agreed that these are the places that they also have uh, intelligence or the you know uh, data from their own you know thing saying that these junctions on the outer ring road in bangalore are places where you know there is high congestion happening and so they were also they acknowledged you know whatever was found in the you know uh, the gray spot uh, report that we generated so as juby mentioned this comes from across you know date across days uh, and across vehicles or across drivers from different times of the day so for example you know in a specific spot in marathalli in bangalore for example when 8 to 9 pm when there are a lot of you know workers crossing or employees crossing the roads you know that's when most vehicles tended tended to apply brakes or you know slow down and uh, similarly at you know 4 to 5 pm in the evening during a you know, uh, uh, when the school buses were coming, or that's where a lot of you know uh, these alerts were triggered. So we can we can uh, we can you know uh, track where these gray spots you know appear and disappear over time, just because you know these vehicles are continuously flying and we are getting data aggregated across you know fleet. So this is the first approach right? that you, you aggregate the alerts at an infrastructure level and this will give you first level indications that this is not a driver's problem uh, why these events are occurring, but this could indicate an infrastructure problem. That's the first input to gray spot mapping. Now, uh, in the second phase, which is what is uh, listed in, in that point three, that uh, we can add more information, right? This is not only about the CAS alerts. Uh, the device is able to detect uh, what is the quality of lane markings in a particular stretch, right? Is there a gap in the median in a particular uh, stretch? Uh, is, what is the condition of the payment on particular stretch? And these are all parameters which have some level of influence on the uh, riskiness of that stretch. Now, incrementally, we can start adding in all these features also, right? To, to make it a more comprehensive composite index, right? What is the observed influence of gap in median to potential safety hazards? And that can be the weightage accorded, you know, if, if that is identified in that stretch. Okay. So, the, so that's the intent that we'll start off with CAS and the aggregation of CAS to determine the riskiness of a stretch. But you know, over the period of the project, we will add in road infrastructure elements, uh, like I said, payment condition, gap in median, lane marking quality, all these data attributes can also be mixed into determining or evolving a more comprehensive and reliable road safety index. So that's the two-phase approach. Yeah, but uh, my my question is, I mean, what uh, Amumani has mentioned that the Bangalore case, uh, that uh, a common problem the junction in the peak hour it has to be every junction will be with lots of gas alerts and uh, every junction will be identified as the gray spot uh, in 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 the uh, nagpur city or any place uh, i mean no doubt we are our our uh, kind of project is linked to nitin gadkari or 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 uh, some high profile uh, VIP and this and that, and that's why it is Nagpur. <laughs> While talking to Professor Satish Chandra as well as uh, Dr. Velu, we said that we could do this project anywhere. I mean, our study <laughs> area could have been anywhere, but it so happens that we want to do it for Nagpur for a special reason. And that, that's okay. That's mm -hmm. okay. But question is, do we have these lane markings what we are going to rely on? 
that lane departure uh, castle art castle art from late departure think of the capital city delhi where is the lane marking hardly any road has proper lane marking if at all it is there it is not maintained uh, it will not be recognized by the cas uh, at appropriate time when it is required to be recognized now whole lot of i mean infrastructure related uh, purity is very much important in any such uh, kind of uh, automatic devices automatic systems which are to answer our question there uh, i mean we we leave the the kind of uh, these systems uh, in it in great difficulty in terms of identifying the purpose for which we have deployed them uh, so th th this again a big issue i don't know whether uh, you may find in one yeah. corridor ring road in uh, nagpur has got much better yeah. situation but if you go to any other road it is yeah. just next to horrible <laughs> so situation is even in, even in ring road i mean when we were doing this black spot study for 22 locations uh, even in ring road some some junctions and all these and most of the remember most of these black spots what we tried to correct were the junctions only uh, probably 3 4 or 5 of them were non junction but all others were junction only and totally unruly junctions and in any city including nagpur all junctions you will find with uh, lots of uh, kind of um, castle arts and they will be identified simply as the black spots but exports so, uh, as our definition or gray spots or potential <laughs> black spots all these are uh, identified many a times not only by just uh, geometry and all other things but by actual uh, happening of the accidents but in this case we don't want to go into that these are the kind of uh, as you said surrogate measures surrogate measures must be very clearly mentioned here and that's what i would appreciate if those can be indicated uh, what all we will be aggregating to get our uh, identification of a gray spot uh, that, that will be much better or rather clarify you, uh, the point yeah Mr. Sigdiv, would you have uh, you know any any specific input? Right? I, I think you understand that it is about proactively identifying what could be an accident spot. And two inputs being considered now: one, how do people, how do vehicles drive across these stretches, and second is some of the infrastructure uh, that we are able to take. Uh, um, infrastructure part, as you say, it will it will come later on. Now, infrastructure part now. A, a presence of potholes uh, doesn't mean that it will be unsafe. People will be slow, and uh, we, many a times in many roads, potholes are there. We don't call them black spots. There has to be accident caused by these plot potholes. Then we brand it as black spot. But otherwise, okay. normally just presence of pothole. It is an asset management issue. It is, it is uh, a much other bigger. issue of asset management i mean principality is not managing its assets properly now but you you consider that obviously for avoiding pothole probably swerving is there from this side to that side that will give cash alerts and therefore obviously there is potential collision and those will all be counted in your measurement and they will give us the gray spot quantification quantification as black uh, that's what will happen but in normal situation a, a set of uh, kind of uh, this thing probably will not call it a black spot or a gray spot uh, sir to uh, uh, like uh, here the issue here is uh, uh, they um, it's not as i keep repeating again that gray spot is one which is going to come out of this artificial intelligence based uh, edge devices 
the yeah. first part is basically whatever identified crash parts have to be uh, uh, if it is uh, they are not addressed till now means we need to address it through the traditional way or whatever the things so that is what uh, we got to know from the discussion with the intel team uh, initial uh, uh, we uh, that's why they approach crri uh, uh, like uh, uh, so that uh, their expertise available on uh, AI based ones and the general uh, our traffic and transportation expertise and using the uh, uh, conventional methodology. I'm saying I'm putting it in a very simple way. Road crash, whatever identified uh, your, uh, black spots are there that need to be uh, addressed to as uh, you are done it already for 22 locations still they are remaining means that need to be again uh, emphasized to them that you are supposed to identify, uh, address the thing through the normal uh, engineering interventions because gray spots are also once when it is identified you have to put the action plan that's why we try to put the action plan in terms of uh, again the normal engineering intervention is only expected to come so, uh, which can develop into a black spot. Uh, considering that uh, particular thing only, they just, uh, this particular uh, in number two, A, B, C were written, sir. Of course, we can fine tune it as per your account, as per your suggestion. But uh, what was conceived was uh, considering the traditional approach as well as the cash based approach. The cash based approach is only for identification based on ah, yeah, the alerts. Identification yeah, beyond identification, it is all traditional approach. Traditional cash approach. will right. not give you, yeah, cash right. will not give you that right. you see, put see, the see. crash barrier there or a yeah. signal there or anything yeah. that you want to yes, put in there. That's right. We wrote C, sir. C is written for that purpose only. A is basically written uh, uh, to under to make the conventional uh, uh, identified locations because those identified locations, uh, uh, even without uh, what to say, cars, uh, that location is already identified as a black spot. So that has yeah. to be addressed to. That's why that has been sure. written. That is the okay. reason. Okay. Nope. Yes, no problem. Yeah, I mean, all those will be done in a traditional way. Yes, That's sir. okay. Yes. Yes, sir. See, after Raja, yes, sir. sir, you raised a very pertinent point, sir. Uh, that uh, we at this stage, uh, since I am uh, plainly telling, I had a discussion with our CRA team as well, and we had a discussion with uh, Miss uh, Juby and uh, Rambu also, because we don't hmm. have the real hands on to the how the entire output is come, going to come from the your uh, data which is going to how the output is going to come in terms of a payment condition in terms of road signs in terms of manuals and traffic lights all those things once when we get a, a feel of the data which is going to be given then uh, based on that only the uh, road safety index and road quality index will be developed uh, uh, maybe through a uh, uh, structural equation modeling or otherwise a principal component analysis and also uh, uh, Ms. Uh, Juby was saying they did some particular work in this regard based on some data collected for the, some other city. So uh, our understanding till now is not that much clear. How are we going to go further? So, uh, but uh, we were uh, thinking once when the data comes, we will get a, because this is going to be taken in phase two. So we will, ta 10 months down the line, we are supposed to do it. Uh, that's why we are not concretized the specific methodology, how the safety index and quality index will be developed. Maybe we have to bank on, IRAP IR is one thing which we can bank on. So we will think about if the data comes, is a more comprehensive, good, then we can use that IRAP itself uh, uh, by taking Jigne shelf. Uh, that's what I was thinking. So, uh, Mr. Juby will uh, tell how their data, which was utilized previously, uh, what we got from another city, how did the quality index was? Uh, did you go up to the index development, uh, Juby? 
No, no, this this is this would be the first time where we are trying to develop an index. But you you will get with the feel of the data till now we are not got the hands on with Juby will have yeah, that actually I, I can even do a demo for you to to for you to get a feel and sense you know of the of the data. Um, see uh, the data. Uh, let me also uh, you know take this time to uh, give a brief about it. Uh, so it's the, uh, you know, the primary device has a camera, right? Uh, uh, and that camera, uh, so, so that is the same camera which is reused to identify and classify the road assets uh, as well. Right? That's why the same device is able to do both alerts as well as identify road infrastructure. Uh, now, today, it identifies about some 25 different types of uh, uh, infrastructure assets which it sees on the road. So essentially, whatever a driver can see in its uh, line of uh, sight, the yeah, device yeah. can identify and uh, classify. Now, now, these are some examples. That of device can device. identify as well as distinguish, isn't it? It, yes, it can it, identify it, and distinguish. It can distinguish and it okay. gives the output in the form of geojson uh, layers which means that you can directly use it to overlay it on top of a map right okay so if for example if it is a payment condition right so if it is a pothole map and the severity of the pothole you can use that data overlay it on the city's map and you can see that these are the stretches for which there seems to be a severe clustering of potholes and cracks right as opposed to some other stretch which doesn't right so that is the nature of the output. Now, it is up to us to collaboratively decide that for the purpose of devising a good, reliable road safety index, which of these parameters make sense, right? Which of these have high correlation to accidents that have happened in the past, right? Based on your expertise, which of these elements have the probability of causing crashes, be two-wheelers or others, maybe a malfunctioning street light, right? That, that is typically a cause. Uh, so, so we have to define that which of these parameters have a material impact to actual uh, incidents on the ground and use that to compose uh, you know, associated weights and derive this index. That has to be jointly done during the, uh, during the project. Right? That which features we pick uh, to build this index, which features we decide to ignore. Like you said, lane marking. Maybe in India, mein lane marking is not so lane marking we will discard. Right? As an example, I'm not concluding right now, mm -hmm. uh, but that's the exercise we have to do during this so that we have a nice composite index which can reliably tell you that this stretch is turning out to be a uh, say a risky stretch because the payment condition is poor, the street lights are not working, and people seem to be harsh breaking on this stretch. Right? So that's the composite nature of the index. Okay. Okay, uh, I mean, this is, I mean, still not very clear exactly what all will be utilized. Uh, I mean, it can, as you say, that your cache camera can capture uh, something like 20, 25 different uh, kind of infrastructure elements uh, in, in uh, various ways, uh, whether it is a pothole or it is a light pole or a signal pole or, or a signpost or even the traffic signal or whatever. Uh, so all that are available uh, on uh, georeferenced map itself, city map itself, and therefore uh, it can link up the weaknesses of these to the stretches of the road to identify what you are saying eventually that it could be in a, a safety index or in a quality index of the infrastructure, etc. So that's how you want to call yeah. it at, yeah. at that point in time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And and the and the you know the desire is that uh, when we when the index um, calls out that say a stretch of five kilometers is high high risk, because it's a composite index which has weightage of the different contributing factors, the uh, NMC for example should be able to click down saying that why is this stretch indicated as risky? And then we can give a list of, you know, what are the contributing factors, right? This is marked as risky because yeah. you know, the payment conditions are bad, uh, because lights are not working, uh, mm. you know. So that can be the actionable input. But of course, yeah. first we have 
China Road yeah. 50 index which actually correlates very nicely to real risky stretches on the road. Yeah, that, that's what it should be. I mean, my concern was that only, yeah, that it should right. be really, really risky locations and then only we call it a gray spot or black spot or whatever we call it. And obviously that will trigger NMC's action that they have to run to the place and to find out what has gone wrong there, why it is branded to be a black spot or gray spot or whatever. So uh, that's fine. So now, I mean, I understood that uh, some of it is uh, very clearly available and some of it is uh, the, for the first time. Uh, so yeah. therefore, yeah. Uh, obviously, uh, it, it was not uh, elaborately written. Now, I would suggest uh, Dr. Wellmorgan to, uh, based on our discussion, if you can uh, expand, elaborate, wherever, whatever is required, and, and then send it to me, and then I'll do the other part of repair. Okay. Okay, okay sir. Like, uh, uh, yeah, I'll... Uh... Do that uh, part, sir. A little bit more elaboration. I'll. Because yeah, some you of... see where you can where you can add the value from our discussions today. Okay. So okay. if if you can add that, and then let me see, and then I'll try to put my thoughts into it, and yes, sir. let okay. me see whether you like my thinking or not. Nice, sir. That's right. <laughs> because you have such a Wealth of experience. So uh, the locations, uh, whatever uh, uh, yeah, uh, you have done it in the past, uh, that locations we, we made, they may, may be still re remaining as black spot. Maybe even now they might not. Maybe have... if if they have not if they have not worked on it, obviously yeah. they will uh, they will not be black spot. There's double black spot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, sir. I will. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah, otherwise, uh, objectives uh, uh, not much refinement is required. No, so objectives you want me to refine anything because we you, try. You to... you you think about think about yourself and see what can be done on it, and okay. then you give it to me. Then okay. I look at it. Professor Sikdar. Uh, yeah. Actually, what I basically understand from this discussion is that they have written this proposal for themselves. They, yeah. know, they know what is to be done, how is to be done, but mm. it is only understood by them. So they should write it for a third person. Who can and exactly, it. that's what is my point. I, I have not written the proposal. I didn't see it before. I didn't yes. uh, participate in any discussion. It suddenly came from you to me and I started reading. I said, what is this? I don't understand. I said or tail of it, how it this parameter will be measured. Matter. So like that. Yes. So that was the question. So now these things will be more clear in the proposal as as we go along. I mean, we'll we'll see that it is made clear. Uh, Velu will do it first, and then let me see what I can. Do. So uh, that's why, sir. Uh, uh, I'll just uh, uh, based on the discussion with you only. Uh, on Saturday. After that, uh, I added uh, more part because not only buses are here, because bus is one of the entity, as you must have now, they have clarified. Now, and one of the entity, I understood it, Velu, but, but that I is... Some crash data of the entire city to some extent, and uh, how those vehicles may get uh, their uh, crash because involvement of Say, for example, as we was told, injury, uh, sorry, uh, fatalities uh, of the two wheelers and the other things. Uh, since we no, don't... NMC, NMC, if they are operating the buses, they should be able to give you the data of bus accidents or CIRT, CIRT, CIRT Pune's data. CIRT Pune's data also gives each corporation wise accidents of the buses. But uh, that, sir, but that level of that data uh, for writing here, how many buses in Nagpur has happened, uh, that kind of thing may be available only if you go to the site, sir. You may not get uh, 
that kind of uh, thing because and also no, I, if, if you know the person there belu if you know the person in an mc just give yeah. him a ring phone yeah, that i want the ring. number of bus accidents number of bus accidents in 2019 and give yeah, me uh, give me the type of accidents yeah, whether that. it is uh, front collision or it is pedestrian accidents or it is head on collision or what it was what type of accident it was uh, with the bus so bus related accidents if you get your your case for doing this study using the bus as the vehicle because there are buses only 250 or 300 odd buses and city has got thousands and thousands of other vehicles now why you are interested in buses that's what will be established sir uh, but uh, i right now we don't have access to any of those people sir that will be certainly will put it may have maybe will bring out a inception report as we go along we may be have, because uh, i asked jp and others uh, they don't have anybody access and we also no, no, they will not have they will not have surely but uh, i mean if you have got any contact with an mc or anybody there uh, they should be able to provide uh, because that, uh, Yeah. If, if we are addressing bus related problem yeah. we must be able to explain that bus related problem is it not yes sir that's correct sir that is right as dr reemur said once we've been uh, struggling because corona has been you know ravaging nagpur yes, we've not been yes yes that's right now the corona is the culprit better. actually yeah it's not allowing us to get most of the things done yeah yeah so as dr velmurga suggested we can probably make this as part of the inception report or something will that be okay sir yeah it should be okay it's it's always fine yeah. it's always fine okay. yeah because we would have you know uh, by the time we you know get down to the field we will have lot more contacts and we will be able to pull up this information from uh, you know different contacts we can do that sir so velu uh if you have got you check in your library what is the latest report of cirt pune okay. cirt pune's latest yearly report with uh bus operations data from all the corporations across the whole country okay now if you 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 put any junior uh, fellow yeah, yeah, to look at okay sir and you 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 may get a little bit of idea just i mean what i am thinking i am trying to think that we should justify this why we are doing this like this okay, way sir. okay uh, i got your point that i will uh, see at this may report i'll just try to get that so sir Yeah, that report will have it has got all these accidents these that everything i mean entire thing for each corporation uh, in the country so introductory part something we try to add by referring to crt pune thing and uh, objectives will do some modification as per the discussion with you like uh, some uh, modification and in study methodology uh, Uh, like uh, 3.1 uh, uh, you would be able to add something uh, like uh, jubi and anbu uh, is it uh, like uh, if if, if yeah. jubi and uh, anbani if you want to do uh, anything on these methodologies uh, the two three three components of methodologies the uh, ai based or cas based uh, kind of observations and their processing to assist on the safety side uh, or whatever we are trying to i mean improving first case is obviously the driver behavior we want to see that drivers behave much better we will give them the alert and accordingly they will behave better in a they will become safer driver that's all that that is the objective objective is to get a safer driver and that's why the number of accidents per year by these buses will be far less that's the idea so just to come in yes sir there. yeah exactly sir say for example we get that i have of the 
bus uh, how many people are getting killed due to the hitting by the buses in terms of pedestrian cyclists or motorized two wheelers then uh, we will be able to establish the utility of the study like uh, uh, with this, uh, the, the, the 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 kind of methodology of the study the way it has to be designed or rather structured uh, yeah. what is to be sensed whether pedestrian is to be sensed more accurately or the two wheeler is to be sensed more accurately what is to be sensed accurately this will become more clear if you know the type of accidents that is taking place regularly so yeah yes, these, these are the issues uh, which will be more clear as you go along but anyway that's okay but we, we will make the proposal very clear and understandable after this now jubi and uh, anwani if you want to do little bit of uh, kind of uh, padding or improving on these methodologies on three components add one or two sentences here and there the way you like and and then uh, dr velmurgan will do the overall thing and then once it comes to me uh, i will do the remaining needful and then it goes to all of you and let us see whether that is sufficient or not. okay sir sure sir okay okay yes, so let us do it so we'll do it and send it to you sir maybe by sure, sir. Uh, we'll complete it hopefully by tomorrow or day after day after that we will send it to you sir maximum by day after yeah good that thank you sir thank you okay all yeah. right Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.